Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are listening in from. I hope this is finding you safe and well. We are continuing the podcast, been away a little bit, and it's from my fault, Ryan O here, from just not editing. First of all, we're getting into this. We have been doing a lot of fun stuff online. Dimitri has been uploading a ton of videos on our YouTube channel. If you're not following there, make sure you go check those out. It's just this kind of coping with COVID series that started up as a result of all this. Uh, his first video is really enlightening with him just being raw and honest about what it's like being a furloughed board uh, certified behavior analyst during these times. All right, with no further ado, welcome to the Controversial Exchange. All right, we're recording. TCE Danielle special edition. I get to be what on up? again. Yes, Yay. you do. How's it going, man? Welcome to the party. Yeah, the party. The party is slow. <laughs> the party is deadly, son. <laughs> the the party mush. is odd. <laughs> it's a. Uh, this is like one of those things where it's like, this is like a party, like a funeral party, where everyone's like, oh, it's it's really more of a celebration, but someone died, so like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> celebration of quarantine oh man <clears throat> yeah, and really are... i should be inviting you to the party because you're the newest addition i'm i've been off for weeks oh that's true that's true i've only been off for like a week now so yeah yeah oh my god it's been a full week fuck already Dude, i'll really? tell you what yeah because i think it was like last tuesday or wednesday wow i don't know pretty much i've <laughs> the, the the weirdest thing about quarantine is that days stop mattering <laughs> time flies <laughs> Dude, not only does time fly it's like it's like living in the twilight zone. I, I, I'm like, oh, wait. I called my mom, I guess. So here's a fun one. So like, I talked to my mom because eh, I do video chat with the baby because she's, she's working from home and stuff. And I guess I, I, I don't guess. I did. I talked to her this morning, but I totally forgot. So I'm like, <laughs> so I did, did you call her again. So I did a video chat with, yeah, with, with Ely. And we're sitting there, and, and she's like, "Oh, this is great." Two in one day. I'm like, "What are you talking about? We didn't talk today." <laughs> <laughs> like just delirious, man. <laughs> I have to check my calendar every day. Like I forgot Easter was Easter. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally delirious, totally delirious. It's are you getting bad. much done? No, of course not. I mean, I'm getting some stuff done, but not really. Honestly, the hardest thing for me right now is reading. Mm. I'm getting other stuff done. Like I'm getting my video. My, I'm trying to do a daily vlog, right? So I'm doing the yeah. daily video log done, uh, vlog done, and I'm trying to do like something proactive on social media and trying to like do my engagement on Instagram and just do my social properly that I I've been talking about wanting to do for two years now and haven't really messed with. <clears throat> um, but it's really hard for me to do schoolwork. I can tell you that much. Focusing on reading is like holy cannoli, dude. Yeah, no, I was just doing, before we met, I was just trying to do some of the reading for our class tomorrow night. Tomorrow is Wednesday. That is correct, yes. Tomorrow night. And uh, it's on measurement, and it's incredibly dry. No, tomorrow's not measurement. Tomorrow is uh, avoidance. Oh, Thursday. Tomorrow, Thursdays, we're not meeting yeah. tomorrow. No, we're not, no. Yeah, Thursday gotcha. is, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm defending. That's the only reason why I know. Right. Um, <laughs> um, but yes, I understand, dude. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, I haven't even, I tried to start doing the, the thing is the measurement stuff is so basic, like, how detailed is it going to get? Like, I don't know. I'm going to do the reading again, because uh, some white book chapters and then a couple articles, it's not that big, not that much stuff, but it's like so dry, and also, I cannot focus. I'll tell you one thing I'm learning here, <clears throat> I officially, like, my mom was a stay-at-home mom with us until I was 12 or thir 13, um, when we came back to the States, and my parents separated, so... Look, and she had three kids. I have one kid. I can tell you right now, all every, I will officially never underestimate what a stay at home parent's reality is. <clears throat> Holy oh, yes. shit. Holy Mary, mother of God. Dude, my sister has three kids, six, four, and two years old. <laughs> Soul and crushing. She was in the hospital for like a day, and I looked after all three of them, and it, I died. <laughs> it killed me. Dude, it's it's like the thing is, it's like it's like up, down, hold me, don't hold me. I'm hungry. I'm not hungry. Pay attention. What am I doing? Oh, look, there's a shiny thing. I want it. Oh, I want to go electrocute myself. Come grab me. Like it's like, oh God, I love you so much. Don't you want to sleep? Oh, I do want to sleep, but then you have to hold me while I sleep. Okay. So it's just like this. Like again, I'm there's, not complaining. It's wonderful. Like he's the best. So cute. But like, he is I'm precious, not gonna lie, yes. guys. I didn't shower. I didn't <laughs> eat. I slept on the couch, and they all slept on the couch with me. Oh, wow. 
Like, yeah, yeah. I have so much empathy for parents, and like, it's amazing. My sister does such a great job with them. Like, yeah, that's great, man. That's and I amazing. sympathize for all the people that are in our program right now who have kids and full time <coughs> jobs. Dude, like, it's, you guys are nuts. It's insanity, man. It's insanity. It's insanity, you know, because my wife is still good. She's still on board. Like, she's still got to get her billable time in and stuff. And, like, we, I got to make sure that we got to make sure that she's, she's cool because I don't know if I could emotionally handle both of us, you know what I mean? Not, mm-hmm. not currently on the, on the, on the employment tip. But yeah, it's pretty, uh, the struggle is real, dude. And aside that piece of it, like the social isolation, I think it's getting to me a little bit. I was so ragey today. Like, I was having that like for real, man. I was like you angry. Ragey? I no know, way. I know. How hard is it to imagine? How did me rage? You? But I mean, like that's kind of like faux outrage. That's just for the podcast sometimes, or like yeah, we're talking about a heated topic. But like I was feeling like a like a caged animal. Like someone backed me into a corner, and I was like, nobody backs baby into a corner. What are we doing here? <laughs> you know, well, it's kind of like bullshit. what we talked about the other day, like the the stages of grief, and like literally, I was saying that my mood changes not just week to week but like day to day hour to hour i wake up in the morning and sometimes i'm pumped and then by yeah. the afternoon i'm no longer pumped or switch it the other way <clears throat> like yeah. it just i and i can't really identify i'm not i haven't really put in like a ton of effort in trying to identify but i haven't really identified the triggers or the variables affecting that yeah um i don't know if it's the social piece i'm a pretty introverted person anyways yeah i kind of like having an excuse not to (laughs) go see family and stuff but you know oh yeah that's i guess that's a positive for you um yeah i don't know it's for me it's like i think my my stages of grief are a little backward than normal i think i got depressed first Mm -hmm. and then i got angry so i'm hoping that i'm sliding into the pleading slash acceptance phase soon yeah um but uh it's like one of those things where i think everybody's going through it so it's kind of like this collective event that makes it feel less it takes a little bit of the sting out of it you know it's it also makes it <clears throat> what do you mean by that well like people are getting laid off or furloughed or or their pay cuts at different times so everyone's experiencing it like yes collectively but also Like, I'll get texts daily from colleagues and friends like, oh, my gosh, my pay just got cut or, oh, I just got laid off or, oh, I don't qualify for this federal help. or And it's all happening at different times, it seems. So, like, when someone is just entering the stage of anger or or sadness or acceptance, I've already passed it or I haven't hit it yet or. Yeah. Where are you right now then? Are you in are you in acceptance mode yet? I think I did it a bit backwards, too, because I was I was totally accepting of it at first. But as more things close and as my income gets tighter and tighter and tighter, I seem to get more worried or more uh, unpredictable in my irritable. Or- I know. Irritability is real. Mm-hmm. That's 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 a good way to put that. And dude. I live with my partner <clears throat> in like a 600 square foot bachelor pad. Um, so... <laughs> Right. We're, like, he's been really good, and luckily he's still working a bit, so we get a bit of space away. But that was tight before all of this, and now it's yeah. tight, tight. You know, what's what's interesting, I think, for the listeners, that you're in Canada, so your guys' situation is a little bit different than in the U.S., and uh, there's this, like, perception on Facebook and the news media that the Canadian situation is actually better because of the way the healthcare is structured and the way the unemployment system is structured and that kind of thing. Um, want, maybe you should talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I try not to like dive into the media too much about all of this. Cause if I think about it too much, then I definitely don't feel good. But I think from what I understand, Canada is doing a much better job than the U S at slowing or like slowing that curve or flattening the curve. I know that we were ahead in closing parks and campgrounds and stores and things Um, in comparison to some states and that seems to have had a really big effect um we i I don't know the exact numbers but i live on an island and i know that we haven't had very many new cases but i also know that we have a really 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 small number of hospitals and the hospitals themselves are small yeah so like our ferries are 
have cut back to try and stop people tourism wise coming over to the island and slow the spread and a lot of our first nations communities have totally shut their like they're blocking the roads to say like no you guys aren't coming in there's no tourism this year do, 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 which is hard on a lot of businesses because we're <clears throat> a tourism area yeah um but yeah so far like we seem to be doing okay our medical system doesn't seem to be super overwhelmed right now right. um i don't want to jinx it yeah but as for uh people working and like essential workers i think that situation is about the same um except that the government is able to help a lot more people i am not one of those people <laughs> yeah that's that's what i was really getting at yeah so. which i think you should be but that's me I, I mean, think I think that you're being the you are the most ethical clinician ever right now to your own detriment. Yeah, in my I opinion. think I eventually <clears throat> will get included. I know there's a lot of um, what are they called? Enemies. Sorry about the noise. My little guy's in his walker, just going berserko upstairs. Can't oh, can't see him. <sighs> no, he's upstairs. He's in his walker thing though, and he's like boot scooting, chasing the dog. He's so cute. He looks like you. <laughs> no, it's good. It's my he's my my cuter twin. My hands are double <laughs> um, But yeah, there's a lot of people advocating for the universal basic income right now so that small businesses and people like me can get included. But yeah. Gang gang is. 2020. So I'm talking about UBI. Yeah. So we'll see. At this time, I'm not going to get any federal support, but who knows in the next few weeks. Hopefully that works out for you. I know mm -hmm. that uh, it's a stressor, man. It's a stressor. I, I Dude, I'm still waiting to hear back uh, not the thing, all the stuff that I applied for. So like... We'll see how it goes, you know, one step at a time. That's all you can do. You know, I, I vacillate. I was talking to a friend of mine on my run um, a couple, like an hour ago. And uh, he's like, <laughs> he said the same thing. He's like, dude, I'm, I'm, I was like, man, you sound so good right now. I'm talking to him. I'm saying this to him. He's like, dude, you caught me at the right moment. He said an hour ago, <laughs> an hour ago, you would have, I was fit to be tied. <laughs> I was like, okay, I see you now. <laughs> Um, so I think everybody's going through it for realsies. I watched a couple things on uh, <clears throat> on YouTube, and I, I, the thing that I'm finding is that the more I stay away from the news, the better I feel. The news yep. is so depressing. My Facebook activity has I have never been a big social media user. I have always limited my time on social media. I'm not big. I think partially because I'm not. I'm, I am introverted, <laughs> so I don't seek that social attention that much. And um, ever since this has started, I have been on Facebook all the time, which means I'm flooded with the media stuff way more than usual. Like, I don't have cable. The only time I listen to the news really is Facebook <coughs> and CBC Radio in the car. Oh, wow. And I'm wow. not commuting, so I don't really get CBC Radio. Right. So Wow. Yeah, I'm, dude, Facebook's not actually as bad anymore. I think now Facebook's just become like funny memes about it because people <laughs> can't take the negativity, which I actually love because some of the memes are just amazing. Some of them are so good. They're so Carol Baskin good. did it. Carol, I know, I know, man. The Carol Baskin memes are the best. <clears throat> God. But uh, yeah, so you said you were in a mood. What's going on? What do you want to talk about? Well, I was, I, well, I was in a mood. I was fired up. When I realized that, you know, maybe uh, <clears throat> tuition might be harder than usual, and then I kind of calmed down. I mean, we chatted earlier this morning, and now it's the afternoon, or <laughs> the day has passed. You know, and, uh, and I'm kind of sitting here and feeling okay. <laughs> you never, you never thought that a, a a flu pandemic would actually cause global mass mood disorders. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're all cyclothymic. <laughs> what the? F like, it's like, what the fuck? It's weird, dude. <clears throat> and the thing is, is that like, even working from home is so stressful for people. Like, I feel like it's so hard because like, if you have kids, dude, like your kids are all over you. You're trying to, trying to do your billable time. You're trying to do your observations via telehealth. You're trying to do your feedback. You're trying to write up your service notes or whatever. And like, it's total effing chaos. And it's like, you, your your workspace is also your chill space so then like you get some bizarre uh, stimulus control yes. happening where it's like you know and then like it's all this just back and forth emotionality and i honestly got him at a point where like i don't know what advice to give to people over, like substantively for it to actually be like a positive good thing that they can get something out of it you know what i mean because it just i i'm i worry about i'm worried about our field honestly this is there's so many things. So many things came to mind when you said that all that. First, like 
I've heard from some people who feel like they're working more now that they're working from home than when yeah. they did at their nine to five, because nine to five, you sort of do, and then you drive home and whatever. But now <clears> they're having Zoom meetings. They said they're like on their computer from eight in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And I feel that I feel it differently because I'm not getting paid for any of it. So yeah. for me, it's just mostly schoolwork and professional development. And like, but the other piece that I have been feeling is that sometimes I really hate being a behavior analyst and thinking like a behavior analyst because I am my own listener and <clears throat> I am my own speaker and I can justify just about any argument from any point of view. And so I'm constantly in this dialogue with myself of like feeling guilty about not working on professional development versus like feeling guilty that I'm not giving myself enough leisure time versus, do you know what I mean? <clears throat> Are you kidding me? I know exactly. That's what caused my frustration today, dude. I li- I, I was a bubbling, ragey, incoherent irrational mess come around 320 today because like my wife had to go upstairs and do some work and I took over with the baby and I was with him like I so I took around nine um so that was like you know nine to 330 with him kind of like not wanting to go down fighting him to go down for a nap blah 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 and I was just like the whole time like all right I gotta get my vlog written for the day I gotta get my thing I gotta I gotta do my reading because my defense is this week and like I want to crush the goddamn defense like if I've got school stuff going on, I want to crush the school stuff. <clears throat> like I got a, a couple of professional development things lined up. I have some, some potential consultations I'm going to be doing at least for a little bit of like side situation. So I can keep, you know, and, and like, I have all these irons in the fire that I'm trying to manage so that I can not just keep, not just like keep financially things rolling, but also keep my mind <laughs> sane. Cause like I was like, when I, when I talk about these videos, like, I know that like it's easy to get lost in the persona when we do the recordings and the podcasts and stuff, but like you know me, like I am actually that intense a lot of the time, you know. Uh, yeah. So like it's very difficult <clears throat> for me to accept the notion of idle time. That behavioral momentum, whether you take it traditionally or even just <clears throat> in a physical sense, like that, yeah. that always having something to occupy our time is what keeps me producing. Oh, absolutely. Stuff. And so now that I don't have it, I'm f- trying to find ways of building it in, but I don't know what's a reasonable level. <laughs> like, <laughs> what would a normal person do? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a thought I was having. How do you think this is going to change the way we view work in the future? Do you think this has been like, on the one hand, potentially like a stop and smell the roses situation where people realized how like overworked and stretched they were or do you think it's just like because of the reality of the economics of it people are just going to try to go back and work as much as they possibly can as soon as they possibly can uh it's hard right that's gonna that yeah it's so dependent on like your career a but for like personally yeah i've been struggling with the guilt of like really loving being in quarantine and not being go 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 14 hours a day of work i have been in school for 10 years since graduating high school and i have never picked up a personal hobby in that time i have never focused on social relationships in that time because i just love school like school has been my hobby quote unquote so now i'm sitting here and i'm getting to do some of the things that i kind of have always said, oh, I'll do after I'm done school. I'll do after I'm done school. And I kind of enjoy it. And I'm realizing that work is not my identity all the time. I like it to be a part of it. Yeah. A little bit. But, um, so yeah, I'm struggling with the guilt around that. And like, like you said in one of your videos, like finding yourself, that's a hard thing to conceptualize. Yeah, it's it's really hard, man. You know, it's it's weird because like I I've done so much personal development the last 10 years. And like I worked the thing is I worked so hard to break this cycle of laziness and like mm-hmm. apathy and kind of uh what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of dysthemia, where you're just kind of like flat even no no fucks, you know, apathetic. <clears throat> and um that's kind of how I cultivated this, 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 this like 
movement, this addiction, this this like compulsion towards movement that I have and like constantly doing things, constantly going, that kind of thing. And it's it's like become so ingrained into how I need to conceptualize myself to maintain that. Um, and it's also fed so much into conceptualizing or at least identifying what I think are my goals and for the future and like what my vision of success is and what my vision of like actualization is what my you know what I think I should be at at a certain time not time I'm sorry just like what I what I want to be when I'm done you know what I mean like what's my end game like I have that what do you want to be when you grow up Dimitri but yeah I know but I mean like for real though and then like this interrupts that you know and and but then also I do see that I do kind of like the idea of <clears throat> taking control of my time because mm-hmm. my thing has always been like I, I especially since uh, I became a BCBA and have like had some success in that like and and demonstrated a higher level skill set that I, I didn't know that I had for a lot of years and like seeing seeing what I'm capable of doing and like that kind of thing it actually happened in practice and like kind of saying oh man I really would love to not have to depend on someone else for a paycheck like i want to control my time i want to be my own boss i want to do these things but never really having both the courage and the capital <clears throat> to go do that and now i f- or the time really mm-hmm. now i find myself with the time um which kind of makes the courage <laughs> come with it automatically because you got nothing to lose you can focus on it um but uh you know and then the capital is kind of whatever and uh I, I, I don't know what that, but I'm like, I, it's almost like I wasn't quite ready for it mentally. Like I was like in my head, I had a couple more steps in, in the process to get to that point. So it coming to what I thought was a premature time, to what I feels like it was a premature time feels like it's not quite right. You know, I don't think there's ever a good time for a <clears throat> pandemic, Dimitri. I'm aware, man. See what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't think this would have been any better like a month from now. Yeah, no, no. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> if, I mean, it would have been better. Like, actually, it wouldn't have been better. It, it would have been the same result, really, no matter what, honestly, yeah. I guess. I mean, so it's I like for it people matter. graduating, though. I do feel bad for like high school students and stuff. But yeah, so I don't know. I think I think this pandemic, I don't like calling it that, but the this quarantine stuff can be a really big motivator for some people. <clears throat> But I also just don't know how much pressure we should be putting on each other to do that or how much not to. Yeah, I got to definitely take the pressure off of myself. I, I really do. Because, I mean, I'm even getting permission. Like, my wife wants me to. Like, she's like, <laughs> chill out. Like, I'm okay with this. Like, for real. And in my head, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm supposed to be the breadwinner. You you, you stop it. You relax. But there's <laughs> like, also the fear of that slippery slope of getting back <laughs> into that time where you felt like you were lazy or apathetic or, you know, there's that. And fear. that's, that's honestly what I think is the root of my reactivity towards this personally is yeah. I don't want to go back to that guy. That guy sucked. Yeah. That guy had no ambition. That guy had no future. That guy had no desire to improve himself. That guy drank like a fish. <laughs> like I'm not going to be that guy again ever. Um, and I and think maybe that's, that's enough that's... to know that that's, that's, that's enough to know that it won't come back, but I can yeah. totally get the fear of it. Like the, yeah, the fears will do it. Yeah. Gets in your head, bro. Gets in your head. But I think like like you talked about in the other video, the pre macking. I'm also having to at the end of the day acknowledge my list. Like my ever the to do list is never ending. It's an infinite to do list because I'm always adding to it. So instead of looking at it <coughs> that way, I've been looking at like, okay, these are the things I've got done and I need to give myself a little pat on the back for getting those done because it's a lot more than I'm giving myself credit for. Yeah. And that's, and honestly, like, that's good for you. And for me, like, I should feel that way too, because the daily vlog, like, you got to think, like, originally when Ryan and I started the podcast, we were like, okay, we're going to do 12, we're going to do one a month. And then it, and then, you know, he got, you know, excited and I got excited and we were like, hey, we're going to do one. some content. And we did a ton of content. We didn't release all of it, but we did a ton and that got overwhelming. And what I really wanted to do was do lots of long, long form podcasts and chop them up into little bits. So we'd have lots of little, little like snippets for people. And we just never did that part of it. So this is kind of an opportunity for me to naturally do that. And I really like documenting the process. I have to say that that has been very fun. 
you know, documenting the emotional process that this is and like, you know, what's going through your head and like sharing that with people and seeing it resonate with them. It's good. I also think that uh, it's just a, a neat thing to experiment with a little bit. I think it's nice for those of us who listen to because we're it's hard not to feel alone when you're in quarantine. So then when you hear other people going through similar emotions and similar situations, it's like, OK, you're <coughs> not alone. No, you're not alone. Nobody's alone in this, man. We're in this thing together. And that's actually, if I, if I had to pick one bright side out of this whole thing is that I think I'm starting to understand, you know, not understand. I think I'm starting to see kind of a lot more of the better side of human nature. I think personally, I've been going through the last four or five years, I've kind of been on this like extreme burnout trend where I've just been grinding and working and like head down, pedal to the metal, no fucks, like, you know what I mean? Just like get the work done, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, like, you know, work, get up, go to get up at 6 30, 7 a.m., go to work all day, come home, work out, schoolwork till 10 or 11, you know, take a shower, be in bed by midnight, rinse, wash, repeat, like every week, week in, week out for like ever, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, just like, because that creating such a level of exhaustion and emotional kind of emotionality that like I started like hating people <laughs> and like seeing the ugliness and everything everyone did or does. And this is kind of almost putting me on the other side where like I'm starting I, I see so much kindness and I see so much like desire of people to just like connect coming uh, together. Like, coming together in a way because you don't really realize how important that is and how for granted you take it not until you can't do it anymore and how much of a how much of a need that is for us too i think i convinced <clears throat> myself that those 14 hour days were what i wanted me t- and th- me too bro and i can't say that i don't i like i can't say that i didn't enjoy that time and i can't say that i didn't feel good um i think I just like routine. And now that I've settled into my new routine here, I'm comfortable with it too. And I'm not looking forward to changing back. That's great. I'm not there yet, but I'm glad that you are. But like, even though I am, if it did change back, I probably would be grumpy for the first like couple weeks, just like I was with this and then fall back into it, which does worry me a bit because I don't know if I do want that. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? How it's like, oh, maybe I do like this, huh? Yeah, I, I do like it. I do like it. Yeah, I want to like it. I don't like it yet. I don't know if I can like it, honestly. I like being busy. I like learning things. Like the thing is, my favorite sport, man, is learning new information. Like I like novelty. Novelty, which of any can kind. be done in cor- not that we'll be quarantined forever, but it can be done. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, man. The only novelty that I can get my hands on is digital, mm. and YouTube is cancer. Facebook is AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> the news is Ebola. <laughs> like all the information that you have available to you <laughs> is and like Zoom I, is COVID. Yeah, no shit. Like I downloaded uh so like I used I had I had saved up uh not saved up, I just hadn't found any audible books that I wanted to listen to, right? Right. So I've had uh I've had like three or four credits um <clears throat> mount up the last few months for my subscription. So I downloaded so like I you know, the thing is, is that I'm kind of a political junkie. So like I do follow kind of the horse races and that kind of thing of it, which I really need to chill out on. Well, and it must be super weird right now. It's so weird. Like, are you guys going to be able to vote? Like, oh, I'm, I do it out. I, I will vote. I will. If I have to like, if I have to stand in line next to somebody who's coughing on me, I will go vote. Come hell or high water. There's no way I'm going to live. I mean, even if I, even if, even if I don't get what I want, like I can't, so I, I can't in good conscience, conscience, not participate in the democratic process in I this mean, country, given the current circumstances of gonna have to the Joker to being the president of the United States. <clears throat> what? <laughs> they're just going to have to, like, I just can't imagine that ever not happening. <sighs> yeah. Man, I, I mean, whatever. Like it's, it's so... <laughs> I mean, I mean so that's I'm not a doctor, about. but I'm not a doctor or anything, but like, you know, you should probably 
you guys are fine. Like, but at least you, know, you and besides, guys don't. And besides, hey. old people don't mind dying for like money, right? Like for the economy, like it's fine, guys. At like, least you guys don't speak <clears throat> moistly. They li- they lived good lives. They li- <laughs> I mean, it's it's gonna be okay. That that's the sh- like that's the thing that's the thing that's so hard for me is that like reconcile like i could suffer some of this stuff <laughs> like i could like i think this quarantine stuff would be a lot more palatable for me as just like a a, a citizen if i trusted the people at the wheel <laughs> were actually like confident adults the only thing that i have we have going for us like where i'm at is that we're in this i'm in ohio so like governor dewine like our governor is pretty much been the picture model of people of what people should follow like in the world for how good the response has been and how it's been going. But even on the flip side of that, like, I mean, okay. So he was just not a dumbass, And he said, we should talk, we should listen to doctors. I mean, okay, cool. Rocket that doesn't science. take away from the absolute circus act. <laughs> that is the national stage of American, of American reality, you know, and how that plays on your psyche. I think long-term is pretty, pretty wild, dude. <laughs> It's I'm pretty not, wild. It's, it's very entertaining for us up north. Like, oh, I'm I'm sure it's like watching Mad TV because like you, it's time. like a cartoon. Like you can't even believe it's real. Some of this shit, you can't even believe it's real, dude. Oh man, when he was when you guys elected him, I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, wow. I'm trying. I don't want to devolve into politics, but I mean, like it's it's pretty laughable. It's very cool. It's very cool. We are living in a very cool time. <laughs> it is weird. The only thing that's good about this is that what it'll lo- what it'll look like in ten years when we're laughing about it, dude. That's I can't the- wait for history, not textbooks, whatever kids use for history things in the future. Like I, ju- I just cannot wait to see how this this time. What of do our you lives think? What do you think they'll say about this time in general? I saw a great meme. That okay. one of the study questions was going to be about how memes were a coping skill in 2020. <laughs> that is great. So it was like a, it was like a, a an essay question of please describe how memes were used during the pandemic of 2020 as a coping strategy uh, for North satire Americans. Satire and yeah, dude, it's the struggle is real, bro. Um, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to talk. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either, man. I don't I, know either. You know it. From a, from again, like I feel like this is kind of depressing. Like I don't want to be depressing for people. I I I just okay, to this switch is just it, what I'm thinking, right? Let's like, just switch honestly, it up a little bit. I am very thankful to be living through this. I think it's very cool that I get to be a part of this history. Wow, you are an unbelievably optimistic person. For saying that. I mean, the thing is, is that like, you know, I'm a history buff too. Like I love, I love history. I read about it. I mean, I have pictures of my favorite presidents behind me, right? Teddy Roosevelt Dude, and Franklin Roosevelt. I watch Barack Obama <clears throat> get inaugurated for yeah, you guys. I thought that amazing. was the coolest thing. I was like a black president. Like I'm alive for this. Great. Yeah. You know, like I think about the potential and the possibilities of of what we once were, what we were capable of, the people that were responsible for those things. Not that, you know, those people didn't have their historical hangups, but just in general, like what they did and the legacies that they left and the greatness that they carried. And I don't have that confidence. You know, Ryan put out that, uh, where's our Dr. Fauci video. Mm -hmm. And like, just to bring this full circle back into the field of behavior analysis, you know, I worry about the lack of leadership across the board for BCBAs. In terms of what this means for our vocation, our profession, what this means for people's paychecks, what this means for their ability to practice, because honestly, like, we have to be real, and telehealth is acceptable to maintain a billable quota. Let's not pretend that, like, the most quality services in the world are getting done through telehealth. Like, I'm sorry, like, I I don't honest to God believe that that's that's real. And maybe that's me, and I, I, this is coming from somebody who uses dis- digital formats to do a lot of what I do. I mean, we do the podcast. You're in Canada, for Christ's sakes. Ryan's in Nevada. <laughs> like, yeah. the three <clears throat> the three of us have never been in the same physical location together, you know, at the same time. Yeah. So, like, it, I don't, I, I believe in in the internet, and I believe in, like, the power of digital, like, telecommuting, tele-whatever, relations, tele information highway whatever but i i really honest to god see our craft as this physical craft and then the other side of it is that 
I really can't believe, like, I think if I really was introspective about it, one of the hardest hit emotional things was like how disposable I kind of feel <clears throat> and irrelevant, you know, given the reality. It to a positive well, I'm topic. just saying like that, but no those, are, but that's the whole thing though, right? Like this yeah. is how it applies to the field is that like, you know, there was this, de- there's this debate on whether or not we are essential or not. And there was that article, uh, did you, did I send that to you? The back I got one? A, I, yeah, I got that pre pre roll of it. It was mm-hmm. like a before a pre release um, kind of draft of that. Uh, what is that? Justin Leaf and his crew. Oh, I can't remember. Who... I gotta pull it up. I can't remember who wrote it. It's there's a good been article. A few of them. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few of them actually coming out. Some of them in mental health and COVID and stuff. But uh, you know, and like them kind of saying, "Hey, we're not that essential," <clears throat> and they they gave some pretty convincing arguments. You know, I I don't. I think that residential staff are, are are pretty essential. I think you know because if if you have to caretake for someone, but I don't think they're essential for behavioral reasons. Like, if I'm being totally honest with you, right here. I mean, it, it's it's case by case. This definitely is not black and white, right? Yeah, like, there it's are some kids case. who are ending <laughs> up in the emergency room because of self injury after two days of seizing services that probably would benefit from continued services more so than non-continued services right and then there are other kids who like it's different up here because we don't have the insurance companies and stuff so but i have families that are talking and they're like we're totally good like this lack of school lack of stress like my kids actually doing better than when they were in their regular school routine like they're less anxious they're getting to spend time with their family like (laughs) For them, it's, it's yeah. You great. see what I'm saying? So it's like, at, at what point, like, at what point in time does this kind of expose the dis- the, the the industry that autism and disabilities has kind of become for us as a field, and um, maybe some of the overinflated perception that we have, not necessarily on our impact, because I think the impact is great, <clears throat> but on the necessity of it. Yeah, you I know. Think- no matter what we're we're improving we can always improve someone yeah. else's life um but whether that is a necessity or not i guess yeah is case by case yeah so that's pretty that's that's a pretty real thing that i think we all have to grapple and wrestle with <clears throat> and i don't know what the right answer is either you know i i think if i think somewhere in between is where the truth lies mm-hmm. you know in this situation if i'm if i'm being very if i'm being as genuine and authentic about my my visceral response towards this thing but uh it still it leaves a lot of food for thought considering some of the chest beating and high and mighty self-righteousness that goes on in, in in the way that people talk about what we do not just with that but with <clears throat> education too when you think about how the majority of schools are well all schools are providing online schooling right now like how's that going to change the future of just i know education? it's weird <clears throat> you know, up until about a year ago, people were still kind of judging people who do online school. Now everyone does it. It's not so easy now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. It's pretty hard, isn't it? Yeah. Try we doing so it when much people flack tell you. For our online program. So much flack. So much. It's not that it's, easy. It's not easy. It's super hard, actually. Yeah. Online is hard. Online is hard for all the time management and self-management pieces that people completely don't even think about when they're in a brick and mortar scenario. Yeah. Accountability is a totally different setup and structure. Like when you're the sole person responsible for your own reality, your own performance, like no, cause I mean, not that the professors don't care, but they don't have any power over you. They don't have any, like they don't have any contact with you on a regular basis. You don't, you don't form that interpersonal relationship that established them as a social as, as a social stimulus you know to exert control on you right you don't get those unwritten social cues that are very guilt oriented right when you, exactly you know <laughs> yeah dude big time big uh, time but also yeah and i feel i do feel bad for people whose brick and mortar programs have been switched to online because those professors probably have no idea what they're doing and are just as confused as the students Oh yeah, I saw uh, I saw uh, an interesting story about a professor who's like in his late seventies, and he can't figure out how to use Zoom. So what is he's doing is this the guy with is... the elf on the shelf in the front desk? Yes. Did you see this? Yes. 
<clears throat> so this guy puts to his elf on the shelf. <laughs> I know, man. He because he can't lecture to an empty room, <laughs> so he's like he's recording his lectures, <laughs> and he's he's using this doll to talk to the doll as his audience, and he's sending he's pre rolling them out to his students that way. Like number one, but very hey, clever. Like the way better than just fumbling around with Zoom. Like oh, big time, yeah. big time. Zoom sucks. Well, Zoom doesn't suck. We're using it right now. But I mean, like, it's still like, it's it's not ideal. It's not the <clears> same. <throat> yeah. No, it's not. Oh, man, this is uh, really uplifting. I really feel like taking over the world right now. Uh, well, that's good. I, I wish I had some more <laughs> positive uh, take-home points for you there. But... <laughs> I know, dude. I know. It just feels good to vent. And it feels <clears throat> good to know that there are other people out there who are experiencing the same thoughts and feelings and the same struggles. And like maybe the takeaway is that we just need to not be so hard on ourselves. I, you know what? That is the best absolute takeaway. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's that's the big thing. I think that's what, for me personally, again, not to make this about me, but that's I can only really talk about my own experience. I don't know. You know, like, I, I don't know how else to, you know, but I don't know how else to do this. So one of the biggest struggles I've had is self judgment. You know, I've always been, I've always been my own worst critic my entire life. Like I don't need feedback most of the time. Cause honestly, any feedback someone's going to give me, I assure you, I've given myself 10 times more ruthless versions of it and, or harsh as far as like what, that what, what I'm saying to myself. So, <clears throat> you know, this is an exercise in self-compassion to the extreme and, and like giving yourself a effing break to chill for a minute and not be like so just self-critical about every little thing. Like you were saying, you didn't shower that one day, like yellow, <laughs> like yeah. ew, but yellow, you know, like <laughs> what ifs? Like for me, it's like, I definitely am trying to keep that kind of stuff at babe just because like otherwise, like that's where for me, depression and that kind of stuff starts sinking in. So like, that is how I mitigate the real negative shit that's going to happen. Where like, then I can't move off the couch for three weeks type stuff. Yep. <clears throat> but I mean, like I'm doing this whole, like I'm, I am challenging myself to do some things like very clean living right now. Like no booze. No, I'm even not even taking my, most of my prescription medications. I am only taking my blood pressure medication. So no, you know what I mean? And like, I'm not one to talk. I don't really drink or do anything fun. Well, um, I, but I this seems like a terrible time. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, the thing is, though, is that it's the exact opposite, in my opinion. Like, it's the yeah. best time to do it. Cause I mean, this is where you want to be. You want to make sure, like, for me, at least, again, I'm not going to speak for everyone. Cause some people, you know, they don't have necessarily some of the negative emotionality that goes with some of these things, but I do. So, like, if you are a person who's more predisposed to being Eeyore ish and a little yeah. blue, <clears throat> you know, how do you stave off what it is to feel blue? You know, and for me as a preventative, I think that keeping my body chemistry at homeostasis and not fucking with it is really important. And I also think that like keeping my wits about me matters because, you know, those things, <clears throat> you know, booze, weed, whatever your your thing is, okay, you know, it, what what I would say is that uh, even overeating, you know, whatever your your drug of choice is, like those dull your senses in such a way. Whereas like when we're already in a situation where reality is getting a little blurry because it's a fucking Groundhog Day, <laughs> you just live in a goddamn. I mean, like there's those Bill Murray memes that are just I, number one. I love Bill Murray, but I mean, like m maybe my favorite actor of all time. But I mean, just seeing like all these Bill Murray Groundhog memes, but like. For real though, like living that repetitive state situation where like, I mean, I, I'm a victim of it. I literally but, forgot. I talked to my mom eight hours ago. Like, but what now the fuck? that you're saying that, and then earlier you said like, I just woke up and I would like go to work and then I would work out and then I would like shower and then I'd sleep. Like that was Groundhog Day too. It was just faster. Yeah, that's true. It's like a Jedi mind trick. Like you don't realize it. That's a good point. Wow. That's a really good point. Like it's the same thing. I think though, what you're saying about getting clean and, and that the other, the, the other thing with those variables is that like you were saying in one of your videos too, is that they allow you to um, <clears throat> step away from those negative processes in your head. They really do. And like we need to be not, if you're going to go a full acceptance commitment therapy route, we don't really want to avoid those things. We want to accept them or take the time to acknowledge them and then diffuse them rather than redirect or avoid or 
what's the word? Overpower, I guess. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I have to, I have to do more act reading. Like I have to do more act reading. I'm not, I am on and off the act train all the time. You know, I'll read something and I'll, it'll really click. And then I'll kind of read something else that'll make me unclick. And I, I, I'm not a full buy-in, but I do appreciate, I must say like reading the happiness trap. And then I've been reading (coughs) the introduction to the aim curriculum. There are some pieces of that, that I really have found valuable, like being able to diffuse myself from my thoughts and recognizing that my thoughts are not always quote unquote, like real or accurate or factual has been a big help. Dude, I, I, t- I mean, I'm telling you, fear is the mind killer. Fear is a little death that leads to total obliteration. I'm, I'm serious. Like that is, you know, I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Like that, I say that to myself, seriously, a, th- a thousand times a day. <laughs> like it's, 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 it's the only way that for me, I need the response and eruption personally, <clears throat> because I can't. I like you were saying before, I can rationalize anything. So like, I need an actual overt action that I'm doing. That kind of uh, that over sidesteps that because I, I, it, but I'm, I'm with you on what you're saying. But I'm I don't you. think the acceptance means not redirecting it because it, because your redirection, I, from what I understand, like I said, I'm no act person, but the redirection is the diffusion technique. So instead of like stop uh, thought stopping and redirecting, you're more like thought accepting and then redirecting. So it's more like, I hate all these metaphors, but you're making space for those challenging thoughts to be there while, still giving energy to these other thoughts does that make sense i I mean i'm gonna take your word for it because i'm not the strongest in this area i'm not either. it makes sense very helpful what you're saying makes total sense um i get what you're saying and i appreciate that you refer to it as a metaphor because otherwise there would be that one person who's like when did they get new ag (laughs) (laughs) deepak chopra walk into this mother no deepak chopra did not walk into this thank god This yes. is a perfect time for some ayahuasca. We gotta get some of that shit going. <laughs> like really go down a rabbit hole, right? See the face of God and shit. Oh <laughs> Just God. kidding. No thanks. No, thank you. That's the last thing I need. I'm plenty crazy. No oh, thank gosh. you. No thank. No thank you. No thank you. No, thank I'm you. good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Could you oh, imagine man. little me on something <laughs> like that, dude? Could you imagine big me on something like that? What, like what? What does that? <laughs> Like I, I, I watch stuff on, like I watch Rogan and stuff and them talk about it. And I'm like, okay, number one is how can you take a drug where a side effect of it is that you throw up for 15 hours? <laughs> <laughs> like that sounds not fun. Cause you just like, literally they ha- like you walk around with a bucket, like gross. <laughs> um, number two, I mean, you're ever you see the face of God, dude, I'm good. No, thanks. <laughs> like, I'd rather not know. I, I'd rather just sit like this is one of those times where I'm like, you know what? That I can go without knowing that one. Like I'm good on that. Like that does not sound fun. Like nothing good sounds about good about that. <clears throat> I I have been have you been watching anything good? Because I've been watching I finished off Vikings on Netflix and then I can't have it on Amazon Prime because I don't have Stark TV. And so now I've moved on to Mindhunter. Oh, I watched Mindhunter forever ago. I'm waiting. Uh, not I'm not watching anything right now. That's another. I'm trying to. I'm telling you, man. I'm trying to be like a, a detox. I'm trying to only feed myself positivity, like for real. So like even on YouTube, like <clears throat> all the YouTube channels I subscribe to are like political commentary. So I'm slowly unsubscribing from stuff. <laughs> like don't recommend this channel anymore. It ruins my soul. Don't wow. recommend this channel. So I'm like I'm like po- I literally searched positivity <laughs> it ruins yesterday. My soul. <laughs> <laughs> literally literally searched positivity yesterday and uh no what i'm waiting for is uh kingdom i don't know what is it uh the last, last kingdom. kingdom yes yes april 26th can't wait utrid son of utrid will be back <clears throat> that show is the shit it's so good I'm it's so good i have the book uh, i have the book to read oh is it books i didn't realize that it's yeah, of course it's books. yeah there's it a be? whole series by bernard cornwell cornwell oh i want where are they in the books are they I don't crazy know. I ahead of the show yet. Oh, I wonder, are they, is it like, is the series complete in books form? I think so. Oh, wow. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, you know what? Maybe this is my chance because reading is so hard. Maybe I should read some fiction. I could finally go back to read some fiction. My nerd so is long. showing. <laughs> it's been this so This is what I've been reading. What is that? It wow, is dude. a Dungeons and Dragons Chronicle. Oh, man. That is. 
It's from like 1990 something. Danielle, Dungeon I, and Dragons books. That is like the lowest said, rung of showing. the of the sci-fi totem pole. It's like so... that is holy smokes. That's like reading his stereo instruction manual with with swords and shields. It was written in 1985. It was written before I was born. That doesn't matter. The age isn't what makes it bad. I well, mean, the best sci- science fiction series of all time is Dune. That was written in the 60s. It's so good. <clears throat> Anyways, see, so there you go. There's our positivity. Like we're 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 finding ways of making it through this. Oh, for sure. It's all for good. sure. I was thinking of going through my house and like doing like a cleansing and just like putting a bunch of stuff like on Facebook Marketplace just to clear it out and just be done with it. I have no so one much wants garbage. Your stuff. Huh? No one wants your stuff right now. I know they don't want my shit. Maybe I'll just throw it away, honestly. There's just so much shit. We've accumulated like that's another thing is materialism. Like I think one one big positive out of this in that like being conscientious about budgets and that kind of thing is like realizing how attached to materialism you become when like you have to cope and like you have to think about convenience over like quality you know and uh that is a that's a big positive takeaway that i'm getting out of this and i don't feel a need for shit uh, and stuff as a matter of fact i want to get rid of stuff I don't have a ton of stuff, but I'm not. I love my stuff. Yeah, well, I I, I just have so much crap, dude. I have a, I have eleven hundred disc golf discs. What? Okay, like frisbees. Yeah, I used to be really into it. Like I, I mean, you gotta think. Like I played. I went one year <laughs> where I played so much disc golf. I played a tournament. I played forty four tournaments one year. That's a I quali- lot. I qualified for the amateur world championships. Like I loved disc golf and then when my all my spinal surgery stuff went down so like but and when you win and you're an amateur you don't win money you win like merchandise right oh so so like that's why you have so much like all those tournaments you know if you place in top three you walk away with you know 80 100 bucks worth of discs you know once a week not to mention all the stuff you buy that you actually throw and like it just accumulates what's that lady's name you need to pull a marie Kondo. is that her name i don't know who that is she's she's got a netflix special and she's all about like (laughs) Does this item bring you joy? <laughs> it's not like a hoarding situation. The, I have them beautifully spark. displayed. It has to spark joy, and if it no longer sparks joy, then you don't need it anymore. Uh, I see. She I has have, rules no, about a... books, and she has rules. She has rules. There's a whole Netflix series. I haven't watched I'm it because I don't. I don't have a. I'm home, good. I'm. So. I'm not into rules. I'm not into rules. There's no rules. There's no I'm, rules. I'm, I'm anti. There's grown ups. I'm anti. Well, there's grown ups. So for listeners, like, what do we want to hear from them about? I would love to hear what they're doing that they wouldn't normally be able to do. I want to hear what people think, honestly. I want to know what they think. I want to know if they're taking some of the advice. I want to know if they're doing some journaling. I want to know if they're, I want to know if they're okay. You know, I want to know if they're, they're experiencing the same stuff. I mean, is, or do you feel like you just developed overnight bipolar disorder? Like it's it's okay. it's okay to be selfish right now and complain a little bit to for those sure. of us who want to listen. Yeah, and and for sure. Like what I my thing is that like I want to do like Brian and I have been talking a lot and we're going to do tea with TCE. Yes. <clears throat> so, I'm I Although think you guys that, are killing me 8:30 in the morning Pacific Standard Time during quarantine. Like I have to get out of bed. <laughs> Thanks guys. Come on, Danielle, you could that's the whole point. You're going to have our tea together. I know. I mean, I'm going to go to 11:30 my time. Get my tea, eh? <laughs> okay all right canada um <laughs> goddamn canucks no i'm just joking i know that's not a thing but like um the no we're, we'll probably like i we're gonna do one on friday we're gonna see how it goes but honestly i'm down to do one every day I, i'm yeah. down to have i'm down to do that every single day i'm down to do like tea with tc in the mornings like it, you don't have a lot going on right now or if you do you you need a little bit of an opportunity to just jump in and talk if you want some if you want to shoot the shit and maybe you know give some advice and get some advice and just talk it out and just like my thing is like the the thing that we were talking about is bcba support group man mm-hmm. like we're here for people yep <clears throat> you know what i mean and it's it's you know not be not ba anonymous baa behavior Anal- analysis anonymous but i mean like cuz it won't be anonymous but i mean i think that it'll be and it's we want it to be a thing where i it, it's going to be a thing where we're just going to do exactly what we just did like we're just talking you know no judgment just support absolutely no judgment Th- this is this is the thing where like i am a mega judgmental prick in in every other aspect of my life like for real 
Like oh, it's, I haven't it's a, noticed that. It's a character flaw. Get out of here. It's a it's a character flaw. And like this thing, this thing has made has helped me kind of like drop that a lot and like really be a lot more accepting and open to things. And that is something that I really like. I'm getting that that's I really like that it's actually exposing that in me rather than making me bitter. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause I really think that this kind of stuff really does expose who you are. Mm-hmm challenges and difficulties they don't i don't think heroes leaders they don't emerge just you know spontaneously i think they they are they are exposed and like you are either exposed to being the piece of shit that everybody thinks you are you know what i mean or you're exposed to actually being a lot better than you gave yourself credit for and i'm i feel like i'm feeling good about that and like i want to engage our community in the most non-judgmental open way possible so that they can come hang out and share their thoughts and their feelings because this shit is super hard and work life balance is hard work family balance stuff and th- in this case life life family balance is very hard and just life is hard mm-hmm. so like let's talk about it and so tea with tce man and uh i'll be there uh danielle if you're you can wake up and uh, grace us you're more than welcome to join please this might have crazy hair <clears throat> that that makes it fun dude that's what's gonna make it fun is like how like the cool pajamas like we should have a, a morning pajama party like who shows up with the weirdest pants i got a onesie <laughs> do you have a onesie i do you have like a bunny onesie i bet like no it's movie. just a regular it just looks like a regular black hoodie at the top it's just a it's just a regular onesie. Oh wow i haven't fit in a onesie since i was like seven <clears throat> there's maybe okay. even earlier we have Six. a canadian store specific to onesies adult onesies Man, that's great. I don't remember what it's called, but if I find <laughs> it, I will link it. All right. Yeah, link the onesie website. Okay, so uh, 11.30 or 8.30, what is it, Pacific, 11.30 Eastern Time, uh, Tea with TCE. Come check it out. Come See talk to us. There. Share your story. Share your stuff. Just bullshit and BS. Have a good time. Uh, catch you later. Bye. Hey, Rhino here, just a quick update. We are still running these T with TCEs. I edited this a little bit late, but they're still continuing. If you want to follow the next one, jump in maybe on the conversation, just head to any of our social media accounts. And since Dimitri and Danielle missed it, marvelous.